Hello guys and welcome to uh, Sports History Screencast 1. Okay, so what we're going to do, you're basically going to be looking at um, different times um, in British history and we're going to have a look at how different sports progressed um, through the ages. Okay, so the first stage we're going to look at, um, I will give you a timeline tomorrow, is we're going to look at anything that was pre-1800, so 1600s, 1700s, and then we'll look at, uh, when you get to 1800, that is the end of popular recreation. So the first stage okay of kind of our British history of sport that we are interested in is something called popular recreation this basically you could say if you're going to translate this this will be pre-industrial okay so it's pre-industrial revolution and that is anything pre-1800s so that might be your first little bit to know it's popular recreation uh, equals pre-industrial which will be par form part of the acronym you'll use to remember the characteristics of popular recreation so the key objective of tonight's screencast is for you to understand the characteristics that underpinned what was what was termed or coined popular recreation so basically any kind of uh, physical activity that was done prior to the industrial revolution now obviously because of it being very unsophisticated the type of activities um that used to take place were very rough okay it was very um brutal some of it and it was often kind of associated with um the, the peasant class or peasants so the lower class so basically it was often it, they would be the people who were taking part and there were the occasional uh, kind of differences where you would have upper class uh, participation but it's very much dependent upon the sports that were played in terms of whether kind of uh, obviously the, the peasants or the lower class could not afford some activities whereas the upper class could play very elitist activities which we'll have a look at um, during tomorrow's lesson so if we have a quick look on them so basically I'm going to go through the characteristics you just need to make some Cornell notes on these characteristics so basically the first one we're going to have a look at them okay so this is one you can put in this is going to be an extra that won't be in the acronym we're going to use tomorrow but basically a lot of the activities were natural and simple that required no facilities or technology or money to take part in so you had things such as bare knuckle fighting okay you had things such as uh, swimming in the local ponds or swimming races uh, you had things such as mob football which was basically kind of a, a like the pre-industrial version of football as we know it today but with very few rules I suppose you'd term it prison rules today so basically anything goes absolutely anything goes in order to win the game I remember me showing you uh, Ashbourne football last year which was an example of um, a mob football that's kind of you know still played today so basically that's the first thing that activities are natural and simple okay due to a lack of technology facilities and money if we go on activities were all popular recreation characteristic number two is kind of they were local okay so popular recreations were local due to the fact that kind of the lower class particularly had no transport and ways of communication so you had to take part in the local area because the rules couldn't spread to other areas firstly because there was no kind of uh, written communication secondly you had no way of, of, of kind of physically transporting lower class people from one place to another so all rule all games or activities or kind of thing had local adapted rules okay due to the fact this is the because anything that is kind of in white is the explanation of the characteristic due to a lack of transport communication so you know the same village will play mob football against each other going on from there then okay uh, popular recreation was uncoded so uncoded basically means that there was a kind of widespread illiteracy uh, uh, amongst the lower class basically there we'll come on to later the jobs that you don't have to write this but their jobs were actually based around agriculture okay so kind of anything it was a like kind of seasonal time so that basically their jobs were specifically manual there was no kind of literacy required for jobs therefore the, the activities they took place in were uncoded they had a, like a literacy uh, and, and the key things here there were rules there were rules, but they were unwritten rules. Okay, so simple unwritten rules due to a lack of literacy. So if you want to get unwritten rules there, that would be great. Moving on, you've got irregular. Okay, so basically these activities that took place, these popular recreations, were, were only really done on holy days okay and, and annual holidays or bank holidays and the reason being is that the people's working hours were kind of you know you're looking at kind of 72 77 hours a week they would work on farms etc so they didn't have the time so they were done occasionally usually on holy days moving on so you've got um now the next characteristic is, is 
these as i mentioned up here okay you've basically got these kind of activities these popular recreations were cruel and violent so you had lots of things activities such as um, animal baiting where you'd have kind of animals fighting each other uh you'd have bare knuckle fighting um you'd have lots of animal cruelty involved within um, kind of activities they would take place you have the violence element where you'd have things such as mob football that was extremely violent and you know it's a real case of a win at all costs philosophy at this point you could there were no particular or there were rules but like kind of very very loose rules and you would use physical and brute force in order to kind of succeed in the activity now going on the another characteristic is that kind of activities were split dependent upon social class and the two social classes well it's known uh, basically the two classes as i've got here are courtly and popular now this is known as a feudal society or a feudal system because a feudal system consists of two classes and the two classes were courtly which was the upper class and popular which was the lower class and basically courtly um, would be the upper class and they would take place they take part in very specific activities such as things like real tennis which we'll have a look at at some point in the next couple of lessons whereas uh, the popular were the, the populist the lower class they were the ones who took part in kind of animal baiting and um, they took take part in bare knuckle fighting they would take part in kind of um, mob football whereas you'd only have the courtly would only take part in very certain activities and if they did take part their roles would be very different and we'll talk about the roles of these in a second so going on activities uh, possible uh, that took part of pop uh, took place in, as part of popular recreation were rural okay so basically it was pre-industrial revolution and the majority of the kind of activities were linked to kind of agriculture okay so if you played on farmyards fields etc um that were obviously lacking um buildings and uh factories etc that came about after 1800 and the industrial revolution occupational so basically there was a kind of massive link between some of the activities that the kind of people did and work now if i gave you some examples there's two examples you could use so popular recreations became um, occupation in some activities so if i gave you like an example um you've got things such as um rowing became kind of um, a symbol like or an activity that people the lower class used to do and they they were known as uh, watermen and they basically kind of rode uh, rode people across like for example the Thames in London the Thames sorry they would go across the, the river and people would charge so it was like a taxi service also you had people called uh, footmen okay now footmen were kind of uh, lower class uh, peasants who would work for rich families and they would carry notes because there was no other way of transporting mail at that point uh, so they were known as footmen okay and but obviously they were they that was their job to deliver messages but they were also kind of training or taking part in it as kind of a cross-country type of race final one then is wagering now wagering is a hugely important because um you know they any money that kind of the the poor did have or the peasants did have or the popular did have that would allow them to go it was, it was a way to go from rags to riches whereas on the other side of it the upper class or the courtly they used to like wagering or gambling or betting whichever way you want to put it but wagering is what you have to use in, in the exam terminology because it allowed them to show their kind of social exclusivity or status um when doing so okay they are characteristics if you can make a note of those point explain uh if you want to we can look at examples tomorrow but make sure you have a question that kind of leads you to these kind of key terms here i'll give you the acronym um tomorrow that we're going to use okay thank you